Hello, so uh, in these sort of strange days, I thought uh, I'd uh, do a video, a live video, see if we can uh, give people something different uh, to watch, uh, something interesting perhaps. So um, we have a few people who work in the lab here usually, and they're working from home at the moment. So um, I was in our collections area looking for some projects that they could take home with them. Um, and I came across a box of fossils. Um, of course, there's many boxes of fossils in our collections area. You might not be surprised to hear that. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a box. <clears throat> Put it here. So this is a box of fossils that were collected by the Leagues, who used to run this museum um, a few years ago. And they collected these 20 to 30 years ago, I imagine. Um, and it's full of some dinosaur bits and pieces. So I thought um, part of my job is actually cataloging the old collection here. Um, and there's some interesting things in there. There's some nice things that the leagues had found all those years ago. So I thought we'd take a look, <clears throat> see what's in here, and um, maybe there's something exciting, maybe there isn't, but uh, you get to see a little bit of what I do uh, on many days. And um, hey, maybe there will be something cool in here, I don't know. So yeah, it's something different perhaps for people to uh, look at while many people are staying at home isolated. So what have we got? Well, one thing I saw in here there were lots of um, little film containers. So this is an old film container that uh, that uh, many people perhaps won't be so familiar with these days. But back in the old days of film cameras, um, of course, you used to get um, a camera film in these. And many paleontologists used them for storing small fossils. So um, there's quite a few of these in here. And some of them have dinosaur fossils in, and others have other things. So this one has got, let me just tilt this camera slightly, and I can, here we go. This one has got lots of snails. So these are little snail fossils. Um, let's see, there's my camera. So to begin with, lots of snail fossils, and it seems like uh, oh, there's some other stuff in here. Okay, so there's a little collection bag here that I've got. Um, you know, I'm going to get a little box from next door. So there's some snails. I'm going to get a little tray that I can pour this out into. So these are some uh, ready folding um, cardboard trays that we use for collections here. Um, I like them because because they're so easy to make. So you just fold them like this. And there you go, you've got a perfect little tray. Makes you feel like you're some kind of origami genius. Um, but. Um, they're pre-made, of course. But now I can pour out these things a little bit more control and see what we've got. So here's our little bag of treasures. What do we have? Well, this is a uh, crocodile vertebra. There's quite a few of these um, in other bags already. Here's another backbone. But this one, this is from uh, a gar, I believe, uh, a large uh, fish. Um, you've probably seen alligator gars, um, maybe. Ooh, this is pretty funky. Here's a little claw. So this is a claw. I haven't seen any of this stuff. I hadn't looked in this bag, so this is all new to me as well. This is a little claw. It looks like a turtle claw to me. It's a little bit flat. Um, looks like a turtle claw. There's quite a lot of turtles, of course. I should say all these fossils are from the Hell Creek. Um, so the Hell Creek Formation was deposited about um, 66 to 67 million years ago, um, all across Montana and into the into the Dakotas. What else have we got in here? Here's a special treat. This is one of my favorite fossils. We just unboxed. Uh, we had a bunch of snails in one of these um, containers. Uh, this is not a snail, even though it's nice and spiral shape. Um, oh, maybe you can see, see those little stripy lines? So this is a coprolite. So this is a fossilized little, uh, a little poop, probably from a, a uh, carnivorous animal. 
probably a crocodile or maybe a small dinosaur, possibly a turtle. Um, the reason why you can tell sometimes uh, that these things are um, from carnivores is that when you think about it, um, the poop of plant-eating animals uh, doesn't hold together as well as uh, sort of uh, the poop of uh, carnivorous animals. Um, if, you, if you've ever seen enough dog poop in your time, you'll know I'm telling the truth about that. So most of the uh, fossilized uh, coprolites that we find, fossilized poop that we find, is, um, is from carnivorous animals for that reason. So there it is. Okay, got some questions. How old? I think I already said that. 66, 67 million years old uh, from the Hell Creek Formation. Uh, most of these are vertebrates, I guess. Um, here's quite a cool thing. This is in two pieces. Well, maybe it's in more than two pieces. Well, these two pieces should go together, but maybe they didn't collect all the bits. That's what it looks like. But these are, uh, hopefully you can see, uh, these sort of... Uh, there's little circular patterns here and then this bone itself has this knobbly texture these are jaw bones from a large fish um, my wife Liz knows a lot more about fish than I do um, but these possibly are from either another gar or maybe a large amid fish called um, called a bowfin an amid uh, Paul asks uh, the snails uh, are they the same age well you know as much as I do they're in an unlabeled film container but they were in this bag um, so I assume they're the same age as these fossils um, and we do get we do get quite a lot of snails like this in the Hell Creek formation um, most of these snails are not very complete um, but they look like what we call viviparous snails um, that we get in modern day uh, settings and viviparous snails are, are so called viviparous because uh, they give birth to live young and um, they're not egg laying snails and uh, they often found um, they feed on a lot of organic detritus so they might feed on um, rotting plant material or rotting um, dinosaurs if you like as well we we actually find um, we find snail eggs laid on dinosaur bones in the Isle of Wight, if you know where to look, which is quite cool. Although these viviparid snails uh, probably wouldn't have laid uh, eggs. Other stuff that's in this little tray. This is pretty cool. This is another jaw. So this is, see all the little tooth sockets? So lots of little tooth sockets there. Maybe I should get a pointer. Yeah, I actually got something in the right place. So these are little tooth sockets of another... Uh, fossil fish jaw. This is another claw, another turtle claw. So the back end of it here, this is the articulating end, so that's where the little finger bones go in, and then there's the claw. The, the, yeah, the tip of it is broken. This is some kind of small ankle bone. I don't know either a wrist bone or an ankle bone. Or something and otherwise of interest in here there's a few more fish plates but there's a couple of crocodile teeth as well oh and then maybe I can compare these two this is another fish vertebra this is from a fish called Melvius so this is a bowfin um, I'm pretty sure anyway it's quite broad and it's uh, well maybe it isn't a Melvius maybe it's a really big a really big other kind of fish but the Melvius ones often have the two top corners here are kind of pinched in so that's one of the ways we can tell uh, what those are so part of what I'm doing is taking a look to see whether there's anything exceptional uh, in amongst these bags uh, those little turtle claws and things like that those ones are worth um, separating and looking at so that's good for me to know um, most of this material wasn't given much data when it was collected so sometimes I know what county it comes from this one's from site 263 although I don't know what site 263 means what else is in here okay I'm gonna call that my dun pile well here's a vertebra I think oh no no I didn't this says uh, Fallon County Montana so this is um, I thought it was a vertebra to begin with, but it's not. This is a phalanx, so this is a finger bone. Um, 
not quite sure what it's from. It's uh, from a fairly large dinosaur. It's one of what we call Ornithischians um, because it's quite sturdy, it's quite robust. Um, it doesn't have the well-formed, um, the well-formed sort of rounded dumbbell-shaped ends of a theropod phalanx. So this is probably from either a Triceratops or it might be from a duckbill. Uh, it could also be from an ankylosaur, but from a large herbivorous dinosaur. So it's a quite, it's okay. It's reasonably well preserved. It's not great. What else is there in here? So here's another little bag. Let's see what's in this. I was quite impressed by the last one. I thought it was going to be full of snails, but it ended up being full of rather more interesting things. Okay, what's in here? Well, I hope you like tendons. So in this container, I wish I could uh, angle it slightly better. Maybe that's... Here we go. So this container, we've got tendons. So this is ossified tendon. It's quite common to find this in Hell Creek. So it's also by tendon from duck-billed dinosaurs. Um, there's a few pieces of that. This is um, two hadrosaur teeth. Not too easy to see. That's them in cross section. So this is part of a little bit of a hadrosaur jaw. It looks like this is another part of it. These might fit together. Mm. Well, they probably fit together at some point in the past, but they don't fit together anymore. Oh, there's another piece here. I bet they all fit. Famous last words. Mm, well, that's something to play with later. Here's another crocodile vertebra. There's plenty of those. Um, here's a little bit of crocodile skull. A couple of pieces of crocodile skull. I wish I knew better crocodile skull anatomy, but I could figure out what these are. These look like the, you see the textured pattern. Um, that's typical of, um, it's typical of quite a lot of different uh, animals actually, but it's very characteristic in this case of being crocodile. So, um, so there's some crocodile skull pieces. So we actually have a few other bits of skull. These, here's a couple of cool things. Um, I assume that when they were collecting these, um, this looks like it was all collected from what we call a microsite or macro site, where you've got lots of bits, um, like an old pond deposit or the bottom of a river deposit, where lots of different bones from different animals have been built up um, over time. So there's lots of different animals in these. Um, so these, here's a couple of things. So these are uh, finger bones of uh, carnivorous dinosaurs. This one looks like it's probably a, I think probably a finger bone. Um, finger bones and toe bones can look very similar. Um, this pit, this little black bit that you can see here, it's quite long and stretched out. Um, and that's where the tendon, one of the tendons attaches that helps uh, move the move the fingers back and forth. Um, so this is basically like, uh, ooh, let's see if I can arrange this there you go. It would be kind of like that in me, I suppose. Um, when you get near the claw, we had some claws before, but they were from turtles. But when you get near the claw, this ligament pit, this little hole, changes shape slightly. Um, or at least in the foot, the toe bones, it can. So that can give you some indication as to what you're looking at. And this one shows the same thing. Um, so these are from... I'm pretty sure that these are from little carnivorous dinosaurs. So a couple of little phalanges... Uh, probably from little raptors or maybe little, um, little, um, well, from little feathered dinosaurs of one kind or another. Uh, this is pretty typical. Here is a crocodile scoot. So this is one of the the bony plates that sits on the back of a of a crocodile. There are a number of different crocodiles in the Hell Creek. Um, that this could be from. There's Brachychamsa, which is a big sort of wide-skulled crocodile, uh, probably ate a lot of turtles. And then there's Lydiosuchus, which is a slightly more narrow-skulled crocodile. Um, I'm not a crocodile expert, so I shan't uh, yeah, take a guess at which one these belong to. So there's some cool bits in there, some nice bits of um, nice bits of, of hadrosaur teeth, and, and uh, the little phalanges are cute. 
they at least at least that much is promising. I was I was wondering whether or not I was going to open all of these boxes and they'd just be full of rubbish. But uh, there's some, some some cute stuff in there. Okay, what's in our next one? Something just pinged on me, but I can't see that. I suppose unless I open another another window. Do, 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 do. Okay, here's another little bag. I can already see some stuff in this one. I'm going to open another window just in case someone sent me a message that was important. Well, hmm, okay. So, um, we've got some really big scoots in here. Um, so here's a really big chunk of a crocodile scoot. Here's, uh, looks like part of another one. Here's part of another one. And maybe I should do it this way around. I can hardly see myself now. Um, ah, here's a bit more of a typical Malvius. Um, vertebra. So here's a fish vertebra and you can see the top is pinched in like that so that that shows you that it's Melvius actually named after uh, I think Melvius was named by scientists from Berkeley I recall and it's named after Melvy Thomas who uh, he was a landowner or is a land uh, I think I think he well he, he lived at uh, he lived very close to one of the areas we used to work up the Haxby Road uh, quite close to Hell Creek itself, uh, so it was, it was quite fun actually when we found out that Melvius was named after him because I found a really nice Melvius skull in New Mexico a number of years ago. So there's lots of crocodile scoots in this one. Um, here's another Melvius vertebra. Um, that's another one of those. Um, this is a gar, another gar vertebra. These ones are a little bit different. Um, these are vertebrae from a champsosaur. So uh, we have champsosaurs on display here in the museum. Um, and they looked a bit like a crocodile, but they uh, they weren't crocodiles. There's actually some, there's some debate about um, what they're actually related to. Uh, some people think they might be a kind of a branch of what we call diapsids, so a sort of lizard relative. Other people think they're a sort of basal, uh, basal archosaur, so related to dinosaurs and crocodiles and uh, birds and pterosaurs but not actually a member of one of those groups they're quite common in the hell creek they led a very boring life they they sat at the bottom of rivers and lakes and um and didn't do a lot they would sit there and every now and then they would snap and catch a fish but otherwise they uh, uh didn't do a lot in their lives here's another little phalanx so that's quite cute um, Nothing else too enthralling in here. A few more bits of crocodile and some more scoots. Um, let's get another. I'm going to leave that one in the tray. Make make another one of these. Uh, which way around do I do it? This way around. Do, do, do. Okay. Maybe this is the most boring video in the world. I don't know. I didn't know what was going to be in this box, so I thought, hey, you know, let's have a look. This is a cast. Um, so this is a cast of a finger bone, I guess. We have an Allosaurus on display, and this looks very similar to uh, some of those Allosaurus bones. So I guess this is probably a cast of an Allosaurus finger bone. That's what it looks like. Made of plaster. So good to know we've got another one of those spare. All right, what's in the next one? Let's open some more of these film containers. I saw an exciting one in here a while ago. Um, this one here. Yeah, these have all been bagged up together. I wanted to have a look at this. So this has a little label on it. It says Sauronothelestes claw. So Sauronothelestes is a small raptor dinosaur. Um, in the Hell Creek, I'm not sure if we actually get Sauronothelestes. I don't remember. Um, we probably get the teeth, but there may not be much in the way of skeletons. So, there's a little bit of padding in there. So it is a claw. 
it's not as complete as it could be. There it is. Uh, so it's the tip of a claw. It's quite curved. It's not too hollow. Quite curved, what there is of it. Um, it's unfortunate there isn't a base to this. Now, it's, if this is so curved, I suspect it's a hand claw. I don't know whether it's... Um, so Sauronothalestes is one of these little raptor dinosaurs, and they can have a really big curved claw on their foot, um, but they have lots of curved claws on their hands, uh, more curved than the foot claws are usually. So this looks more like a hand claw to me. And if we'd had the base of the claw, this bit, um, then we could have uh, tested whether it was a hand claw or not, because the, the way that the base is angled to the curve can tell you about that. Um, but I can't with, with this one. But that's a cute little tip of a claw, probably a hand claw from a small um, raptor type dinosaur. So that's kind of cool. What else is in here? This one says DDM 9510. So I don't know what this is, so let's see. This is, I'll pull this one out of my hand. This is a random assemblage of things. So we've got things like fish vertebrae. Uh, that's quite a long fish vertebra, that one. Sometimes the long ones... Oh, here we go. This is quite fine, uh, but this is a salamander vertebra. So if I put an end on like that, you can just see the little hole where the spinal cord would have gone through. Uh, this is a vertebra of a salamander. So... Um, Often when you're at these microsites, as I said before, you get a mixture of lots of different species. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a salamander, so that's quite good. Not too surprising that salamanders were living in these uh, wetland environments. Here are some crocodile teeth. Now, you remember, maybe if you've been watching this, I showed you some crocodile teeth before that were quite pointed. And, of course, most crocodile teeth are quite pointed. But these ones are a little button teeth. Now, these ones are from the crocodile, or the alligatorid, uh, Brachychampsa. These are the flattened teeth that it had near the back of its mouth, the back of its jaws. Um, so it had big flat teeth uh, for crushing with, probably crushing turtle shells. We actually have fossil turtles that have tooth marks in them and crushing damage. So there's a couple of Brachychampsa teeth in here. Um, here's another one, a little stubby Brachychampsa tooth. Uh, um, here's a lumpy blob of something. We'll forget about that one. Uh, here's another little bit of a jaw. Um, I still want to say this is fish. Um, I might really regret calling it fish because this could be a champsosaur as well. You can see those little sort of flowery shaped tooth sockets. Um, they're not true sockets. They're not deep holes like the in mammals and in, um, in mammals and in in archosaurs, things like crocodiles, dinosaurs, pterosaurs. Uh, the teeth uh, sit in deep sockets, so the roots of the teeth go into deep sockets in your jawbone. Um, but in things like lizards and fish, uh, the teeth don't. Uh, they sit. They sometimes they just um, are secured to the to the jaw in these very shallow little uh, pits. Um, you might remember <laughs> a couple of weeks ago before the world went crazy, uh, there was that um, bird skull in amber. And one of the arguments that people were making that it, that it wasn't a bird um, was because the teeth didn't sit in sockets in the jaw. They, they were just attached to the jaw individually, um, attached on the surfaces. I can't quite remember the term. I probably should know it, but I don't. Um, and so people were saying that that's not a bird, that it's a lizard, because its teeth aren't in sockets like a bird um, should be. Um, so anyway, there you go. Um, here's another crocodile tooth and a bunch more fish vertebrae. Nothing too enthralling in that one. Here's another cute... Uh, this is a, another gar vertebra. And some more snails, because who, who can't get enough of these snails? Um, the snails don't have any of the shell preserved. If they did, that would be quite exceptional. Well, not exceptional, but it's not that common in the Hell Creek to find the actual shell of the snail preserved. This is what we call a stankern, 
which is a term for an internal um, mold, an internal, um, it's where the inside of the shell has been filled in with the sediment. The shell itself has dissolved away and just left us with the infilling. So, what else we got in these? We've got a few more of these film containers. I've got quite a lot in this box too. I'm hoping that we'll find something amazing. All right, so this one says T-Rex tooth on it. We'll see. <laughs> I don't hold out too much hope for all of these. Okay, yeah. So, two fragments of Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth. Uh, in it themselves, these sorts of fragments are not that rare. Um, so you might wonder why we bother to collect them. Well, you know, sometimes we don't, um, but many of the sites that I'm collecting at the moment in the Judith River Formation, we get lots of fragments of teeth like this, and they don't look that pretty, of course. But what you can do with these is you can grind them up or you can grind off little bits and um, sample them for um, different um, elements, things like oxygen and carbon. You can do what we call a stable isotope analysis, and what that is is we look at the ratios, the different proportions of things like oxygen, carbon, uh, nitrogen, and some heavier elements um, preserved in the tooth, and they can tell you what these animals were eating, um, and maybe where they were living too, um, or, or where the water source was for what they were drinking. So if you have enough tooth fragments like this from the same site, um, you can analyze all the fragments. So maybe all the T-Rexes were drinking water from one source and maybe the plant eaters were drinking water from another source. Um, you can start to look at that kind of information. So even these little tiny fragments can be used for that. In this case, um, these ones, we don't know if we have anything else from this site because it's not labeled. But some of the sites that we're collecting, um, that we're collecting, that I'm collecting, um, during the summers, we, we, we collect that data for that purpose. What else is there in there? This one, who knows? It's got some labels on it. Okay, this is another little treasures, another little collection of treasures. Oh, this, this is quite nice. There's some nice things in here. Um, quite a lot of crocodile teeth. Um, so that's a crocodile tooth. That's a crocodile tooth, and that's a crocodile tooth, and they're quite pointy teeth, so they're probably from um, probably from Lydiosuchus. That's a stubby tooth, and another stubby tooth, so those are probably Brachychampsa. Here's a little, a little tiny phalanx. Not quite sure what that's from. That's quite cute. Um, hmm. Here is a long vertebra. This might be, I think, might be a tail vertebra from a um, champsosaur, maybe. That is another crocodile tooth. Part of crocodile skull material. Uh, another little, very long but very worn finger bone. Another finger bone. That's a salamander bone. Crocodile scoot, that's another fish, possibly Melvius. There's a little um, finger, or a foot or a hand, a foot or a hand bone, probably a little metatarsal or metacarpal. So that's the bones across the back of your hand or the, the middle of your foot, uh, probably from a crocodile or turtle. And then this, this one, <clears throat> it's hard to hold these things up with my, without my big hands getting in the way. This, I think, is, I want to say it's frog. It's quite robust. Um, what I'm looking for with these very small, delicate vertebrae, um, most of them will be salamander, some might be frog, and if we're lucky we might find some snake, and snake vertebrae are quite elaborate, um, more so than the amphibians, the frogs and the salamanders. So I would be curious about this one. Liz will probably tell me, oh no, that's a frog or a salamander. But uh, it's quite large actually, even if it is a frog or a salamander, it's quite large. So we'll keep an eye on some of those. So this is so far I'm quite happy actually. There's some nice things in some of these. 
Um, there's nothing particularly unusual as yet, but um, it's nice to go through. It's not just full of sand or, I don't know, just junky, junky fragments that don't tell us anything. All right, my last film container for this bag. So we've got this little jar, which has... Huh, okay. I'm going to fish those out in a second. I'm going to open this up. There's a couple of interesting things in there which we'll look at. Um, all right, what's in this film container? This one is... Looks like entirely full, or mostly, these are Triceratops teeth. So most of them are quite worn. Um, I'm going to lift up the screen again. Maybe I should have a better camera in the future. Um, so there's a Triceratops tooth. So this is the base of the tooth, and this is the top. It's been worn flat, so you can see it's quite flat. It's reflecting quite nicely. That's the flat, worn surface on the top. And it's got a, a ridge here as well. Um, sometimes you'll, have hear, you'll hear people saying that Triceratops teeth are double-rooted. So here's one. You can see there's like a root, if you like, at the front and a root at the back. Now, they're not really double-rooted. They have one root, that, and then they have like a little overlap point at the back, which makes it look like it's double-rooted, uh, but it's not. Um, but this one is a quite small. It's quite nice, actually. It's got a little wear facet on the back, and there you go, a little Triceratops tooth. They're almost all Triceratops teeth, but um, here we have another duck bill tooth. And given the fact, it's quite small, given the fact that um, this is the Hell Creek, this is probably Edmontosaurus. Um, some people argue over what you call the duck bill from the Hell Creek. Um, I don't care. I think it's Edmontosaurus or whatever you want to call it. I don't think there's any more than one at a time, so what you call it is kind of up to you. Okay, this little vial has got very small things in it. Not super tiny, so I'm going to... Ooh. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to pull this out. There's a couple of nice things in here. Which I doubt will work on camera all that well, but ah, well, you know, I can see them. That's what's important, isn't it? Okay, um, right. Well, there's a little... I get dust all over my expensive computer. Okay, so there's crocodile tooth. This is quite cute. So I'm going to hold up to my camera. This is a tooth from the front of the jaws of a small Tyrannosaurus. Um, it's almost certainly what we call a premaxillary tooth. So it's one of these ones from the front at the top. I say that because it's D-shaped in cross-sections. I, I, I don't know if I can make the cross-section work. Probably not. It's, uh, it's like a D-shape, so it's flat on the back side, and it's got a curved uh, front to it. Um, it's almost certainly from the premaxilla, the front. Um, when they're very small, um, T-Rex has a small tooth a bit like this, the very first tooth in the maxilla, which is here. And also, sometimes the teeth at the very front of the dentary can look a little bit like this. But I'm pretty sure this one is a premaxillary tooth. So it's one of its incisor form front teeth. And these are a different shape from most T-Rex teeth. Most T-Rex teeth are quite, uh, quite stout, especially in the adults. They're quite rounded. They've got serrations on the front and the back. And they can bite into flesh and tear through flesh and sometimes bite into bone. I think they bite into bone accidentally. I'm not one of those people that thinks that T-Rex is eating bones. I think that that's something that's a bit silly, but there you are. Um, but these front teeth anyway, the incisor form teeth, uh, they're a little different shape and they're good for nipping and making very delicate bites. Um, we have a number of fossils here um, and, and something I've worked on in the past is bite marks, T-Rex bite marks on Triceratops. Um, and we find delicate sets of four or five bite marks showing stripping behavior um, and that's what these front teeth are being used for they, they, they work in sets of four on either side of the front jaws and they sort of rake if you like the flesh off the bone 
um, the larger teeth, especially the maxillary ones at the sides, they're more for in, impaling and, and forceful bites. Um, so the deep gouge marks that you get with drag marks um, on some bones, those are made by those kinds of teeth. So that's a little pre-maxillary tooth from a very small uh, T-Rex. So if you see one like this, well, imagine four in a row and then double that to eight. So its whole, the front of its mouth would have been about an inch wide, maybe an inch and a half wide. So, you know, extrapolating roughly, the skull of this little T-Rex would have been about that long. Really quite small. So only a little baby one. So that's quite cute. I like that. There was another tooth in here I saw. Uh, this little... It's a little tooth. I was hopeful that this actually would be a little raptor tooth. Um, we've collected quite a few from the Judith River in recent years, but now I can see it, sort of. You know, I can only focus on it this far away these days. But um, this is a small crocodile tooth. So that's what that is for a young crocodile. This lumpy piece of fun. Uh, maybe that's what we call a spitter. It's a very worn piece of enamel. Um, things like Triceratops and Edmontosaurus um, were plant eaters and they would, their teeth would be ground down and they always had replacement teeth underneath. So the thought is sometimes their teeth they would be swallowed um, after they uh, shed their teeth, after they lost their teeth and maybe this got went through their digestive system. Uh, this is quite cool. This is what I was quite excited about when I looked in the um, jar. This is a mammal jaw. Um, this is the back of the lower jaw. I'm pretty pretty damn sure it is. Uh, it's really it's got to be. Yeah, this is the back of the lower jaw. So what are you looking at here? There's a tooth. I should use my little pointy thing again. There's a tooth. Here's the back of the lower jaw. And yeah. This is one of the muscle attachment sort of pits you can see here. So this is the back of a jaw. Um, it's not huge, but it is quite big. So this could be a didelphodon. Um, I'm not terribly familiar with all the names of the different mammals in the Hell Creek, but you know, mammal material is not super rare in the Hell Creek. But um, if you find a bit of a jaw with a tooth in place, that can be really helpful. Um, but anyway, yeah, part of a mammal jaw, so that's pretty cool. Um, what else is in here? Not sure what that is. Some little bone of something small. Otherwise, there's one baby hadrosaur tooth and a lot of fish vertebrae, which we've seen lots of those already, and I don't think we need to see any more. So those can go back in here. But that was worth it. That's the little the little baby uh, tyrannosaur tooth and the... Uh, and the uh, and the mammal were, were very worth having. So that was it for that little bag. Um, there's lots more in here, so I'm just going to put these ones all back in the bag they're in, so everything's kept as it was. Um, my plan for this is for me to go back through these again. Uh, when I actually catalog them. Uh, right now I'm going through to see whether there's anything worth separating uh, that's worth studying um, or um, cataloging separately. Um, many of these fossils won't, won't be stored in our research collection um, because they lack a lot of data, but some of the specimens, if they are important um, or useful for education, that sort of thing, will be stored in, 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 the, in the right collection for that. So there's some bigger things. Let's get some bigger things, and I'll go back to um, go back to some of those small sets. Here's something that's not Hell Creek. So this is a large mammal tooth. I don't know very much about mammals. Uh, at least it looks real. I'm pretty sure it's real. Um, obviously, for something large, we have a number of rhino teeth. It doesn't really look like one of those. It looks like um, some of the anthracothea type teeth that I've collected in the past, but um, I don't really know, but I could identify what that is, but that's a large mammal tooth. We have another large mammal tooth in here. 
since I'm, since I'm on the subject, here is... This looks real as well, I think. Either that or it's well painted. But this is a tooth from a baby mammoth. So, um, see this tightly woven enamel on the surface? This is for grinding grass. Um, so, mammoth um, teeth are made of this very tight weave. So, they were, they were grass eaters. And mastodon teeth, which are very similar, another kind of ancient woolly elephant mastodon teeth have high pointed crowns and they were thought to be more browsers they were probably eating leaves rather than grass so this is a baby mammoth tooth um nothing else much i mean there's i'm sure there's lots of interesting things i can say i can say it's um most elephants only have one of these chewing teeth um act um, in each of their jaws so they have four uh, in their mouth working at any given point in time so these small ones it's not the tooth from the front of the jaw of a big elephant it's actually from a small mammoth and as as elephants grow they re they their teeth uh, replace what's in here a few different random looking things we've got this is a tail vertebra so um few things we can say about this vertebra so first of all it's a tail vertebra so if we look on the back of it it's got this like little double bump at the bottom that's where the chevron attaches that's this long bone that comes down uh, each vertebra in the tail between two vertebrae they have like a pointed bone that comes down that supports some of the tail muscles um, and actually some of the leg muscles too the legs attached to the tail um, so that's what that is and then on the top of this vertebra there's this kind of these two pits with the sort of pitted look. Those are called, um, they're not called sutures anymore. We can't call them sutures, but this is where another bone would attach. The top of the vertebra attaches to that area there. And um, some people say that the fact that this suture, if you like, we'll call it a suture, is open. The fact these bones aren't fused means that this is from a young dinosaur. Um, that's a general rule however not all adult dinosaurs have fully fused these joints so it's not not a guarantee so there's a little tail vertebra probably from a hadrosaur a duck-billed dinosaur probably a montosaurus here's another tail vertebra this is very different though you can see how this one is all stretched out this vertebra i just picked up is quite stout and tall this one is a bit more stretched out. This one, there's this little black hole that you can see in the middle. That's where the spinal cord went through. These two bits here, this, these are the, the prongs, if you like, that latch onto the next vertebra. Um, it's a bit broken. The ends are broken on it. But this is a tail vertebra either from a large Ornithomimus dinosaur or from a modestly sized Tyrannosaurus. So that's a... Tyrannosaur or Ornithomimid tail vertebra. And also, somewhat randomly in here, that just looks like a clay infill of a hole in a concretion. Uh, here's a lithified shale. It's exciting. And there's a piece of fossilized wood. I'm not even going to get it out of the bag because it's just a piece of fossilized wood. But if you like wood, I suppose it's pretty good. So, still more exciting than mammal fossils, but there you are. All right, so there's a bag of larger bits. I'll put those over there. What else we got? <clears throat> uh, some random things in here. So this is a bag of larger bones again. Uh, this, I think, possibly pelvic bone from either turtle or really big crocodile or really big champsosaur, maybe. Um, number of quite large crocodile vertebrae so you remember those little vertebrae I showed you before these ones are quite big these are uh, uh, almost two inches long um, so some larger crocodile vertebrae 
quite impressed actually some of the crocodile material that we get out here in north dakota from the hell creek and also from um easternmost montana um is a lot bigger than what i'm used to um over in a more more central montana i suppose west east central montana um so i'm not quite sure but the crocodiles do seem to get a little bit bigger downstream if you like um the further east you go in the hell creek as you get out into the north into the, the dakotas um you would have been close to what's called the western interior seaway so that's this ancient seaway that filled the whole uh, middle of north america um and so perhaps when you're a little bit closer to the coast the the swampy areas are bigger and the rivers are bigger and the crocodiles get bigger i don't know but um, they certainly seem to be larger some of the material that the league's collected uh here um is quite impressive I'm not quite sure what this is um impression of something could be plant material it's an infill so whatever it is the bone or the woody material has long since been lost this is a bivalve so that's an internal mold of a bivalve we call these unionoid bivalves but you know pretty much all um clams that live in fresh water that we find we call them unionoid bivalves but this is a freshwater clam so that's what that is um nothing else in this bag i'll put these away and look at something else not quite halfway through this yet here is some stuff that's not hell creek but this is some of the stuff that i saw um when I was uh, looking in the box. So this says sauropod bone fragment, Utah. So this is a piece of dinosaur bone, presumably, uh, from Utah, if the label's accurate. And there's an awful lot of places that have dinosaur bone in Utah, but since it says sauropod bone fragment, that now helps us to narrow it down. Even if this isn't sauropod, presumably it comes from a rock formation where people typically find sauropods. So um, looking at it, I don't know if I can tell whether it's sauropod or not. It's obviously from a very large dinosaur. It doesn't have any of the obvious um, air, air spaces inside of it that sauropod bone uh, vertebrae especially can have. Um, so I can't say from that perspective, but it's preservation looks like it could be the same as um morrison formation where you do get sauropods um and in utah they also have um sauropod bones from um from the lower cretaceous so who knows another piece that says sauropod bone fragment that's not very thrilling here's a shiny thing everyone likes shiny things look at that very shiny got a rubber band stuck to it this is a piece of says now oh, you see i don't think that's right this label says dinosaur bone fragment utah but this looks to me like a piece of silicified wood that's been polished if your bones look like that with all those twisty patterns in you'd be in some serious trouble um, i think that this is a piece of silicified wood that's been polished um, which makes it much less interesting but there you are this here, this says Megalosaurus tooth cast, England. So this is a cast of a tooth. It's not a real tooth. It's a cast of a tooth. And I saw this before, and I thought, that is way too wide. Look how wide it is. It's really round and wide. Um, looks too wide for me to be a Megalosaurus tooth. Uh, Megalosaurus teeth. Megalosaurus is a bit of a junk tax on what we call a junk tax on there's too many uh lots of dinosaurs get lumped into the same one but this one looks more like a tyrannosaur tooth to me it's very broad um i what i suspect this sort of thing is that maybe some tyrannosaur teeth got cast and they got set into a megalosaur jaw or something i don't think that's a megalosaur tooth Either way, it's only a cast, so it's not uh, it's not a real one. But uh, I did have something I was going to show you. Look at this. When I was talking about megalosaurs, because I already knew that there was a megalosaur thing in there. This is pretty funky. 
do 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 get something out. Uh, not that one. Not that one. Not that one, not that one either. This is something I got recently, and we actually have a good collection of these in our collection here. But I have a nice plate of a Megalosaurus jaw here. I'm just showing off my toys. Here it is. So this is a plate from um, an old monograph. It's sad actually that these monographs are being taken apart. This was this was a random set that somebody was selling off, um, and they weren't from the same monograph. So someone had removed these a number of years ago. But this is an original. Um, 1850s I think no maybe not 1850s 1880s probably for this monograph but this is a, a plate of a megalosaurus jaw so there's a lower jaw there is one of the teeth sticking up and if this was indeed a megalosaurus tooth it would go something like uh, that it's very difficult doing this there you go something like that so that's pretty cool what else have we got in this fossil box? I'm going to put these back over here. Uh, here's another little film container. Still got quite a few of these film containers to go. So here is a vertebra in with a film container. This is a vertebra from a dinosaur from the Hell Creek called Thescalosaurus, which um, now when I talk about Thescalosaurus, I mentioned that uh, Clint Boyd, who's at the uh, museum over in Bismarck, about 100 miles east of here, he is uh, the world expert on Thescalosaurus. Uh, so every time I find something Thescalosaurus, I send him photographs, although this is just a vertebra, it's not the most thrilling thing in the world. Um, you can see it's got the sutures still preserved on the top, so it's probably not fully grown, although it is quite large, so that's a, that would be a very large Thescalosaurus. It does look Thesk to me, though. Um, Thescalosaurus vertebrae, uh, they, they have what I call a kind of cotton reel look to them. They look more like a reel. Uh, they're, they're kind of quite equally proportioned. What else have we got? Here's a little film container full of treasures. Let's have a look what's in here. More treasures. Here we go. So, in here is... This is part of what is probably a hadrosaur jaw, a very small part. It's been abraded, so this has been bouncing around an ancient river. But you can see these long slots in it. Those are um, tooth sockets. Um, and they're very long like this, it's making this almost certainly, given its size, this is either from a Triceratops or an Edmontosaurus. Two crocodile scoots just here, with a little bit of a crocodile scoot probably there more crocodile scoot here's another little bit of a coprolite so here's another little fossil poop uh, from a little carnivore of some kind um, that looks like a coprolite but I don't think it is I've got hiccups um, I think this is um, I think I just pulled my power cable out I think this is um, a, just a little clay infill uh, that's a very weathered tooth, possibly. Another tooth, duckbill tooth, mm, bits of teeth. This, I'm going to pop this back up again. Make sure I've got my power working and everything. Okay, this is a little ornamental skull plate off a large fish, possibly a gar or an amiad. This is a claw. So this is one of those things I'd like to look at in more detail. Um, this is a little claw of somebody. It's got a large process on the bottom. The large process here. Probably can't see it very well if I hold it against my big white face. There you go. There. A little bump. 
that's a muscle attachment point. It's called a. But it's an unusual shape in this. Could just be could just be a crocodile or something, I suppose. I'd have to have a look, but it's not one of the more common morphologies anyway. So it's a quite quite cool claw. This is a very small vertebra. It's doing all sorts of strange strange things. And uh, another salamander vertebra, so that's cute. So some nice things in there. Uh, that little claw is quite cool. I'm hoping for uh, material from some of the rare little uh, carnivorous dinosaurs that you sometimes get in these these um, microsites. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing in recent years in the Hell Creek is actually finding um, the remains of some of these smaller dinosaurs. Um, I've been working a bit with Leptoceratops. Uh, I have friends who've been working on other groups. Now, Leptoceratops is a small horned dinosaur, a bit like a Triceratops, but much smaller. Um, but we've also been collecting uh, material from um, all sorts of small raptor dinosaurs. Not not much, you know, just one bone here and one bone there, but some of it's actually quite what we call diagnostic, so you can tell what species you've got just looking at it's, um, the bone. Here's a couple more film containers. So, what's in this one? It says Fallon County, Montana, Hell Creek. Treasures. There's a big lump in here that's jammed in. big lump that was jammed in was this coprolite and it's got those little lines on it again those little lines are called sphincter marks so when the dinosaur or the crocodile is pinching its uh, its butthole um, that's basically the pinch the, the the marks of the of the sphincter of the hole as the poop came out I like finding those they're not everybody's cup of tea here's a gar scale it's the first gar scale we've we've had, which is quite unusual because usually these are super common in these sorts of sites, which makes me wonder about where this was collected from. Here is this incredibly small, tiny thing that won't focus properly, is the tip of a very small phalanx, possibly from a very small carnivorous dinosaur, little raptor. If you're really lucky, that would be the end of a phalanx of a bird but who can say I and mean, it's only a phalanx it's not going to tell you very much there's a very small crocodile vertebra here is a tail vertebra from a crocodile or champsosaur um, and so is that and here's another brachychamps or tooth so another one of these big turtle crushing crocodiles no one likes turtles <laughs> uh, probably going to get comments now um but, uh, okay so nothing too thrilling in that particular one but uh, some more nice vertebrae and fish vertebrae some big big gar scales there's another one great putting out space some more salamander oh boy This is something actually interesting, but it is far, far too small for you to be able to see it. But this is a tiny vertebra of something very small. That could be snake or lizard. It's not fish. In my luck, it'll be a very small frog or a very small salamander. But the really small ones are more rare because, you know, big, big robust bones, big. I mean, I say big, you know, salamander vertebra is only like seven millimeters long. But this one's very small and very light, uh, so it's very easy to be destroyed um, in the ancient river systems. So to find one is, is, is not as common. So that's quite cool. What else do we have? We have another one here. Uh, 9512. So it's all given the same number, so possibly all from the same site. More snails. Who doesn't love these snails? Here is a big gar vertebra. So another gar fish vertebra, a big one. 
Ooh, here's the first one of these. This little hexagonal tooth is the tooth of a ray, a flatfish. Member of the, well, it's a flatfish. I don't know if you can call them flatfish, but uh, you know, member of the shark family. And you can probably just about see maybe a little a line at the bottom uh, where the root of this tooth, if you like, has been divided into two. So this is from a flat, uh, a gar, uh, <laughs> a ray called um, Mylodaphus bipartitus. So that shows us that we've got rays um, in this ecosystem. Here is a little, uh, this is, uh, I think, a neck vertebra from a turtle. I think this one, turtle neck vertebra. Didn't used to be all that familiar with turtle neck vertebrae, but then I thought I'd found a really rare raptor vertebra, and it turned out it was a turtle neck vertebra. Uh, they can look like a lot of things. So yeah, that's another reason not to like turtles. Here's another uh, triceratops tooth. A uh, little tiny crocodile tooth. I can't really show you because it's very small. Uh, another crocodile tooth. <clears throat> this is probably a little toe bone from a turtle or a crocodile. And a little claw. Another little claw. Little tiny claw. I'm not sure what that's from. <clears throat> So there's some nice things in these. It's not all gar scales. Okay. What's next? I expect there might be quite a lot of more of the same for these things. Um, but who knows? Let's try a bag. Let's see what's in one of these bags. In theory, there should be bigger stuff in the bags, right? Here's a bag, and you know I'm not going to pour this one out because it's full of more snails. We're just going to put that over there. There's only so many snails you need to see in a day. What else we got here? Okay, this has got some larger pieces of bone in it. Maybe there'll be something interesting in this. And this is what I would be doing anyway. I mean, I have to do this anyway, go through all this stuff. So, oh, here we go. So this is... This is a really big crocodile vertebra. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, I don't see crocodile vertebrae this big in what we would call the Type Hell Creek area. So if you're over near Jordan, um, you don't see crocs this size, or at least I never have. Um, or so, we, so they're not common. I spent 10 years collecting there. Um, so this is a really big crocodile vertebra from from the Hell Creek. So there's nothing else in there, just uh, various parts of it. Um, but interesting because it's from a big one. And like I say, there's, there's been quite a few uh, pieces of uh, and, and, and um, intact large crocodile vertebrae that the league's collected from that area, easternmost Montana, just over the border, Fallon County. I think it's very interesting. What else we got? Let's do another bag. What's in this bag? Hopefully not more snails. Uh, this is full of gar teeth. Gar teeth? Gar scales. I'll pour a few of them out. Oh, what the hell. I'm pouring them all out. There we go. <clears throat> we got like five people watching. Here you go, gar scales. I'm not saying we've reached the bottom of the barrel, but when you're collecting this many gar scales, you're having a desperate day. They are very pretty, though, and um, they're very, very common in the top of the Hell Creek. They're not so common in the lower part of the Hell Creek. Um, but there you are. So lots and lots of gar scales. And then there was also this little vial in with it, and... Uh, I'll put the gas scales back. In that little vial, I can see um, a few different things. I probably should say this is not how I keep all of the fossils that are collected today. When we collect fossils today, 
um, they're stored in these in these little containers. Um, they have the labels with them. They have all their locality data and information kept on a computer system. Um, so this is the historical collection that was here when I arrived. So like, as I've said, possibly not often enough, uh, cataloging all this stuff is, um, is part of my job here, is going through the historical collection and sorting it out. You know, is there information, interesting specimens in there? There have been a few things, a few things so far. So here's this little vial. It's got some nice things in. You might be able to make out some orange stuff like that. That's a piece of amber. So that's a piece of Hell Creek amber. So is that, and so is this little bit here. There. I'm going to use this. So there's amber. Here's another, another one of those strange vertebrae. See how long it is? Maybe you can't see how long it is. Um, that, I don't know, maybe that's snake. Say maybe it's snake. I don't see many snake vertebrae. Um, so it's probably a frog, but it looks a little bit... I don't know, I, I, I'd look at that again. I'd get Liz to look at it. <laughs> Uh, here's a little tooth, little crocodile tooth that has a root on it. Um, so that's a tooth that fell out of the jaw. Uh, that's this is um, an atlas. This one. So that one there. Can you see that? I can just about see it. This. This is the vertebra that sticks into the skull. It's the last vertebra of the neck. Uh, I believe it's of a frog. Uh, Liz would probably correct me and tell me it's a salamander, but uh, it's either a frog or a salamander, it's an atlas. And for whatever reason, you find a lot of these, um, they're more common than the other vertebrae from frogs. Um, they're a little bit more robust, maybe. Frogs don't have many vertebrae, I think they have seven. So we have lots of vertebrae in our body, uh, but frogs only have like seven in their whole body. Their body is basically a big spring made for jumping. Uh, these teeth here... I think those are fish teeth. I think I think those are that might be a Melvius tooth, or I suppose it could be a Champsosaur tooth. Three fish vertebrae, another little tooth. That one there is a duck. Uh, uh, I think it's a duck bill tooth. Yeah, no, it's a trike tooth. Uh, and then here's some cute little phalanges. I'm gonna pop the picture up the front of the screen up again. Oh dear, sorry about that. Stabby in the eye, like one of those 3D films. I'll regret that in a few years' time. Um, yeah, there's a little phalanx. That's not very exciting. This one's quite cool, though. Look at this one. It's very small. It's only about a centimetre long, slightly more than. This is a... I want to say it's a hand phalanx, but, you know, when it's this small, sometimes the toe bones, the foot bones, can be this stretched out, too. So this could be either a hand phalanx or a either a hand, a little finger bone, or a toe bone from a small raptor dinosaur, maybe even a bird. Um, I suspect it's a little raptor, one of those guys. So that's pretty cute. It's quite a nice one, actually. So that's pretty some, some, some nice things in this one. Let's see if I can get them back into this little vial. I don't know if my computer goes off when the screen goes black. I think it's because I'm not moving my mouse enough. It just sets it off to go quiet. Okay. Almost done. Just got to put this amber back in. So little pieces of amber like this. Um, amber is, of course, fossilized tree resin. Um, little pieces of amber. Sometimes you can get insects in them. We have a colleague up in... Um, this goes back to those fish girls. We have a colleague up in Saskatchewan, which is not too far from here, Ryan McKellar. He is one of the experts on amber from the Cretaceous. Um, and he finds a lot of insects and all sorts of things in the amber that, that, that he's been working on from Canada and now from all around the world. Um, so he don't, doesn't just find bits of insects. Um, you can find feathers in amber. You can find little bits of um, plant material in amber. You can even take... Um, isotopic data 
uh, from the amber, I believe, and uh, get information about atmosphere and stuff like that, composition. So there's all sorts of information you can get from amber. So yeah, if you want to get a whole lizard in a piece of amber, you need a really big piece of amber. But if you want to get uh, information like little tiny mites, or um, like I say, isotope information, chemical information, you can just use little tiny pieces like that. So that those little bits of amber might might be of interest uh, research-wise. This doesn't look like it's going to be a thriller. I'm just going to pull two of these out. It's a bag full of Champsosaur vertebrae. Yep, there it goes. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, what's in this one? Probably more Champsosaur vertebrae. Yep, more Champsosaur vertebrae in that one. We'll just ignore those. Um, this could be something. Or it might be terrible. Let's find out. Okay, well, this is a long bone broken into three pieces. They probably fit together, but you never know. They might have just picked up. No, oh, there you go. That one goes on there. And this one does fit. So, quite commonly in this collection, and I'll show you another bone to illustrate this. Here's a bone. It looks kind of interesting. It's, uh, it's thin. It's got interesting sculpture on it. This actually looks like it could be part of a skull. It could be a skull bone. It's very thin, fragile. Uh, it could be part of a process of uh, tyrannosaur vertebra. But it's got a clean break on this edge. But where's the rest of it? When you find this sort of thing in the field, if you find a fragment like this, you should be trying to identify every fragment you come across. It's something I make my field crews do. I don't like people telling me it's a fragment. Like, if you, all you can say it's a fragment, you really shouldn't be out prospecting. You should have a go at identifying everything. If it's a, if it's a limb bone like this piece, you should say it's a limb bone. It's in fragments of limb bone, fine, but don't just say fragment. Um, so, anyway, when you find pieces like this, you've got a broken edge. So, okay, where's the rest of it? It's a clean break, it's quite, it's quite crisp. So whatever went there, it's probably further down the hill, further up the hill, or sticking out the hill. But it's somewhere you should be looking for it, because there's no point just collecting a lump like that. What use is that to me? Not much use. This is the kind of thing that I kind of filter out the collection. But the rest of it might have told us something. And one of the more frustrating examples of this here was uh, a nice uh, nose with a nose horn of a triceratops that we had in the collection. And it had a clean break at the end and at the other and at both ends. It evidently was part of a really nice, well, I don't know if it's really nice, but it was evidently part of a more complete skull, or at least the nose part of the skull. But their other parts weren't collected. Um, even if they're tiny pieces, you can fit them together. So you really should collect all the pieces. Collect them all up. Don't just collect the big ones. So this is a hadrosaur limb bone of some kind. Um, not quite sure what it is. It looks a bit like an ulna. So that's a forearm bone. Um, so this bone here in your forearm. Looks a bit like an ulna. It's a bit worn on the end, so I'm not quite sure. Um, but that looks to me like a, an ulna of a hadrosaur, small hadrosaur. In three pieces it could be a this this is not I mean if this is all there is there's not a great deal we can do with it but we can clean it up I can give it to a new volunteer in the lab and they can probably clean this up quite easily we can glue it together and it can be part of the education collection it's good practice bone it says metacarpal on there well maybe it is metacarpal I'm not sure there's that lump of unknown bone. Uh, here's another bag. What's in here? I'd say it looks promising, but I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'll never watch this video again. Uh -huh. This is really thick walled. Look at that. This... I'm guessing is part of a humerus from a crocodile or a turtle. 
not quite sure. Um, don't know if I have any questions. Oh, are there are more comments down here. Oh, I see. I have to I have to scroll down to actually make the comments come up. Um, so Dave Fuquay asks. I missed it. Do these have a general locale? I know they did a lot of work near Baker. Yeah, it's probably for near Baker, Fallon County. Um, <clears throat> well, that's a good contrast. There's a super dense walled, thick walled limb bone, and here's a limb bone that's really quite hollow. Um, hollow bones are. People often say, oh, it's a hollow bone, it's got to be a theropod. Well, you know, there are a few different dinosaurs that have quite hollow bones. This one is very hollow, so I suspect it probably is a theropod, a carnivorous dinosaur. Um, but uh, it's not, there's not much of it anyway, you know, it's just a piece. So it's not going to tell us too much. There's another Melvius fish vertebra, big one. Here is um, another impression. I'll bet this fits onto the other chunk from before. And another crocodile vertebra. You can never have too many of those. I was wondering whether I should just do like an ad saying, I'm going to do this and do it tomorrow. But um, I thought this at least would be good practice for doing these kinds of live uh, video streaming things. And I kind of wanted to look at all of what was in these pots anyway. So there's still a few left. There's not loads left, but there's some. Um, I remember looking at this one before as well. It says drum on it. So is this a dromaeosaur? I bet you it isn't. <clears throat> nope. It, it, I mean, it's a tooth, part of a tooth. So here's part of a tooth. The black line is where a sharpie has been drawn down the serrations. I don't know if I can get them to focus, but this is part of a tooth. Um, it is obviously not a dromaeosaur. This is a tooth from a T-Rex. It's big. It's sturdy. It can only be a T-Rex. That's what it is. So uh, you can see the cross section of the tooth there. Again, this is a damaged tooth. What can you do with such a thing? Well, you could grind it up and use it for a geochemical analysis. Um, perhaps what's in this one here so I've got a little tiny vial and I've got a little film container I've never liked collecting in these film containers I just don't like them they rattle around I like little plastic bags I'm much more comfortable with that but some people like these film containers they do stay sealed well I'll give them that all right there's a bunch of vertebrae in here we've got another big gar vertebra uh, triceratops tooth, the impression of a fish skull plate. Again, I don't know what's going to be in most of these. I only looked in a couple before I decided I was going to do it this way. Um, part of a duckbill tooth. There's a smaller fish vertebra, probably another small gar. Another bit of a tooth. A little bit of a vertebra, another vertebra. That's probably a salamander. And that's a very worn down trike tooth. Okay, that wasn't very exciting. What's in this one? All these little vials have had good stuff in them so far, so I'm hopeful. So here's a little vial. I can see some crocodile teeth in it. Uh, Maybe there'll be something more exciting than a crocodile tooth, I don't know. If you were watching before, you might remember one of these vials had a mammal tooth in it, a mammal jaw, back of a denary. If I worked on Cretaceous mammals, I'd be much more excited about that. Uh, okay, so what's in here? Um, crocodile tooth. Everybody likes crocodile teeth. Um, a bunch of very small vertebrae that are quite elongate. Liz will have to tell me what those are can't really see that very well so there's a load of those in there some more crocodile teeth but there's another tooth which is about the only super exciting well not super exciting but the only other vaguely exciting thing in here so I will just put these little fish vertebrae away and then I'll show you 
what that tooth is from or at least um, try and make it look really blurry and then you'll just get quite frustrated about it but, oh well maybe you sh should have um, I don't know had a better computer um, so this is a very pointy little tooth it's very narrow um, it's actually hollowed out underneath so you can see it was a shed tooth there's like a little hole in the bottom so this is um, is this Ricardo Estesia? It's got little ridges up the side. It's either Ricardo Estesia um, or Paranicodon. Now this is a raptor dinosaur, probably. Um, I can't remember whether or not this particular tooth type. These are all from the Hell Creek again. So these are animals that lived alongside Triceratops and T-Rex. And these, some of the very, very small carnivorous dinosaurs, we didn't know much about them until quite recently um, because all we had was their teeth. And um, I think some, uh, some jaw bones were described quite recently, um, which had some of these teeth together in the same jaw, um, showing that the different kinds of teeth actually belonged to the same animal. It just had different shaped teeth in its mouth. Um, so this is one of those little raptors anyway with very, very, actually, long pointed teeth. If I hold it next to my hat there, it'll contrast a bit better. There you go. So a long pointed tooth. So this is a um, little raptor tooth anyway. Ricardo Estesia or Paranicodon, or maybe they're the same thing. Um, David Evans could tell you. I could too if I looked it up. And, but uh, I am not. So uh, that's there. let's find some more. So that was quite cute. I was wondering if we had any of these little raptor teeth. Trouble with things like that is they don't make very good displays because they're very small. I can barely see them anyway. So, I mean, most people who visit wouldn't be able to see anything. So microfossils are really cool. They're great when you stick them under a microscope. And maybe if I'd um, set up a webcam on the microscope, we could have, um, I could have brought my microscope over here and had it so you could switch cameras um, I believe I can do that, but I'm only one person. I'm only one person. Stop, stop pressuring me. God, I'm getting it for free. Okay, um, another crocodile vertebra. I'm getting as bored of those as you guys are. Um, three Champsosaur vertebrae. These things are all over the Hell Creek. I, I have, I, I think I, I think we have like a box or two of these in collections. Like literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Champsosaur vertebrae. And individually, they don't tell you very much. If you had, um, if you collect a microsite and you collect all the fossils from the microsite, if at least you keep them together, then I might know, oh, well, in this ancient river, there was a crocodile species present and there was a champsosaur present. But if you separate them all and keep all the champsosaurs together, then no one can tell you anything other than champsosaurs got this big. What's in here then? Here comes another one. Another little film container with some small stuff in it. Who knows what joys there will be. Uh, okay. Coprolites. Couple of little coprolites. Maybe I'll angle it down. You can look in the joy. Uh, here's another little finger bone from a little carnivorous dinosaur. Look how deep deep the uh, groove is and you can see how deep the groove is on that see it's quite good they say it's dumbbell shaped that deep groove what that does is when the other uh, toe bone or finger bone fits in um, it stops it bending sideways so my finger can sort of bend sideways a little bit like that see um, but if you have a deep groove like that you you don't have that sideways flexibility it strengthens the joint which is really important if you want to um, if you want to have strong fingers and toes, um, which many of these carnivorous animals do, they want strong fingers and toes. One of the things that's annoyed me recently, I'm going to say this right out now, it really annoys me, you've probably heard me rant about this before, when people are measuring uh, claw curvatures, there's been a lot of studies recently, people doing claw curvatures, and they, they follow some of our work from the past. Um, they, don't, they don't look at all aspects of the, the toe bones and the claws. They'll just look at like one curvature and they'll only look at the middle toe. So if you look at the foot of a dinosaur, it's made of three toes. It sort of stands like that, if you like. It has the middle toe number three, the inside toe number two, and the outside toe number four. And people are measuring number three. 
the middle toe. That's the worst one to measure. So, I don't know. I don't think anybody's probably watching this, but stop measuring digit three, like, because it's a really bad choice. And if you send me a paper that says I measured digit three because everybody else measured digit three before me, you're a bit foolish. You should be measuring digit two and digit four as well as digit three. If you're only going to measure one digit, don't measure digit three. The middle toe is the one that bears the weight of the animal mainly, and it's actually the least variable. So if, if you want to figure out what these animals are doing, look at the outside toes, because they're the accessory ones. They're the ones that vary the most. And if you want to do other things, look at how, look at the ends of the phalanges. So the, the, the toe bone that fits into the claw, what's really cool in, um, in some raptor dinosaurs, all of the joints have this groove in them, which means there's not much flexibility in the joint itself. It's very strong, but inflexible. And in others, only the one that fits into the claw has that joint. So it shows that the, the claw joint was strong, but the rest of the foot had flexibility that maybe it needed that for running about or some other purpose. But there's all this kind of hidden information in the morphology of all the bones. If you just go around measuring digit three because somebody else did it before, you know, I've reviewed two or three papers like that, and they, I find them quite frustrating because they don't tell you what you could find out. If you sat there and you measured 4,000 digit three claws, maybe you should have only measured a thousand of them and measured a thousand digit twos and digit fours as well. You'd have found out loads more. So there you go, there's a rant. Uh, speaking of claws, uh, that, I'm not sure what that is. Well, actually, I, I think this is part of a little tooth. It looked like a claw, but this one is a claw. So here's another little claw. This one's probably turtle. Unfortunately, if it was a carnivorous dinosaur, I'd be more excited. Um, little sacral vertebrae from something. And uh, another neck bone, I think. Possibly, from a turtle. And, uh, oh, this is a neural spine. So this is the top of a vertebra. So uh, these champsosaurs. Ugh, I've not got this on mirror version, so it's hard to line up. These champsosaurs, this vertebra doesn't go with the spine. It goes with a much smaller one, but it would fit on top like that. And I don't think the spine fuses onto the vertebra in champsosaurs. It stays flexible, um, which is something you see in a number of uh, water-living aquatic um, animals. You see it in ichthyosaurs, and you see it in... Um, I think you see it in champsosaurs. I might be wrong, but at least it doesn't fuse until very late. We have a skeleton... Uh, as much as I've been bad-mouthing Champsosaurs as being rather boring, when you find just the vertebra like this, yeah, they aren't terribly exciting. But um, we have a skeleton, a complete skeleton, more or less, of a Champsosaur from the uh, Judith River that we collected uh, last summer, uh, which is quite cute. Unfortunately, it was coming out head first, as these things always are, so the head is missing, but we have everything else, from the base of the neck all the way down the body to the tip of the tail. Um, I think, actually, one of its feet is missing, but the other foot is that. So it should be beautiful when it's prepped. It's one of the most complete champsosaurs ever collected from the Judith River. That's pretty cool. Um, there's not much else. Too much. Oh. oh, this is actually... Okay, so this is something we haven't looked at before. I thought this was just a little fish jaw, but it's not. All right. I thought this was a fish jaw, but it isn't. This is a hybodont fin spine. So a hybodont is a special, special, it's not special, is it? It's a, it's a, it's a particular kind of shark that's extinct now. Um, and um, they were very common in the early Cretaceous. Um, and they had spines. This is one of the little spikes that would sit in front of the dorsal fins. So the fins that stick up like jaws in the movies. Um, this is one of them. They had spines in front of them. Um, there are some modern sharks that still have spikes in front of their fins, like a spur dog, I think, does, like dogfish. Um, but all hybodont sharks had them, and some hybodonts got very large. Um, and so I thought, originally, when I saw this in the box, I thought these little bumps that you can see, I thought that they were teeth, but they're not. They're the little... They're related to teeth, but, I mean, let's not call them that for now. Uh, they're the little spikes and hooks that you get on a hybridon spine. So what does a hybridon spine tell us? Well, they're not that common in the Hell Creek. 
You do find hybridon teeth in the Hell Creek every now and then, but hybridons mostly lived in the sea. And uh, hybridon sharks, unlike modern sharks, hybridon sharks would sometimes swim up river channels. And so if you find hybridon material like this, um, it's indicating that um, these sharks were swimming up um, estuaries. Uh, you're not too far from the sea when you find one of these. So we do find them in the Hell Creek. At the same time as these hybridons were around, um, we had modern sharks in the Lake Cretaceous. Uh, but the modern sharks don't swim up estuaries. I don't know why. Maybe they're not as freshwater tolerant as um, hybridon sharks were. I, d I, w I don't know why. Um, but it's an interesting little factoid about hybridons. So there's a Hell Creek hybridon. So that's that's worth knowing about because they're not super common. Um, they're very common in some of the places I collect in England. We used to go out and collect lots of hybridon spines in the uh, Vectis formation on the Isle of Wight. So that's what there was in that little pot. I think I have two more pots from this site. So who knows what's in these? Now this one says T-Rex tooth frag. I bet it's a thriller, this one. Oh, yeah. There you go. There's a bit of a T-Rex tooth frag. The less said about that, the better. And now I've forgotten which one I just put the lid on. Who's that one? All right. Here's another one of these. What's in here? Is there anything of interest in here? There are lots of crocodile teeth in here. It's crocodile tooth, crocodile tooth. These are all crocodile teeth. Sometimes these little stout teeth. Sometimes they're T-Rex teeth. Um, but these all look like crocodile. It looks crocodile, crocodile, crocodile. Crocodile, 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 crocodile. That's a triceratops tooth, triceratops tooth. Um, just triceratops and crocodile in that one. We could look at every individual tooth, but uh, it's not that exciting. God, I've been doing this for like, what, an hour? Well, I have a few more things to look at. So there's the camera again. An hour and a half. Here we go. There's some things in here. So this little baggie. Americans like to say the word baggie. I don't think British people say it, so I apologize for that little Americanism. Uh, oh, I thought this looked more interesting from the outside. It's full of crocodile vertebrae and some crocodile scoops. Nothing all that exciting in there at all. Put those back. <clears throat> if I can get one view of this video per year in a million views, I'll still be nowhere near Justin Bieber. That's the harsh reality of this. Sort of this is Albertosaurus on it, so what's in here? Uh, there's some nasty fragments of Albertosaurus. Now, the question here would be, it says Albertosaurus. All right, so is it Albertosaurus? Albertosaurus is a type of Tyrannosaur that only lives, that is only known from um, the Horseshoe Canyon formation um, in um, Alberta. And the Horseshoe Canyon formation um, is about uh, 68, I think, 69 million years old, down to about 72, 73 million years old. Um, it's older than the Hell Creek, so you shouldn't get Albertosaurus in the Hell Creek. I say you shouldn't. I mean, of course it's possible, but no one ever has. No one's ever found it there. So I suspect that this was called Albertosaurus because the tooth looked to the person's eyes, slightly slender, more slender 
No, it's probably not. It's probably Tyrannosaurus fragments. Ooh, hey, I just saw something good in here. Oh, yeah. I actually remember seeing these a while ago, and I forgot completely about them. That's my, this is my favorite thing so far. I'm just going to move uh, a few things out of the way uh, to make some space. This is probably the best thing we'll see all day. All right. These are ankylosaur teeth. Four of them. Look at that. So ankylosaurs are the armored dinosaurs. Um, things like ankylosaurus. And in the, Hel in the Helcrete, you only get two different kinds of ankylosaur. You get um, ankylosaurus and um, a dinosaur called Denvasaurus, which was not named after me. Um, it was named after the city of Denver, which is not where it was found. It was the type specimen was actually found, I believe, in South Dakota. So they found it in South Dakota. They stored it in Denver, Colorado, and named the dinosaur Denvasaurus. Um, but these are little ankylosaur teeth. So four of them. They're actually quite big. Ankylosaur teeth are, are, are normally very small, so these must be from quite large individuals. They look like small teeth. But they're actually from large individuals. Uh, so they're really quite nice and maybe quite quite nice. Um, ankylosaurs, really interesting in the Hell Creek. Really interesting because um, ankylosaur teeth are not common, but you do find them. And armor from ankylosaurs is very diagnostic. You can tell what you're looking at. Um, you can tell it's from an ankylosaur by seeing it. You wouldn't confuse it for anything else. Um, so when you find a little piece of armor, no doubt that's what you're looking at. The thing is, you don't find ankylosaur armor very high up in the Hell Creek. You only find it in like the lower third, um, which I think is very interesting. Something's going on in the Hell Creek um, where ankylosaurs drop out. They, they go extinct before the KT boundary, maybe. Or maybe they just go and live somewhere else, which is what I think is going on. Um, there are some people who... There's some people who have suggested that because you get different kinds of dinosaurs preserved in different sediments in the Hell Creek, that means that maybe uh, duckbills lived near river channels and that triceratops lived out on the plains. I don't believe that for a second. I think that it's um, it's either a taphonomic thing or it's probably related to the way that different water tables and different drainage regimes uh, create different um, different sediment types probably shouldn't go on about that too much because it's not even that interesting to me and probably less interesting to you here's a little turtle claw um crocodile teeth there's some cute little limb bones in here look at these not sure what these are quite cute little limb bones I'd have to look at what these are but these are quite nice so those are worth worth seeing um, possibly crocodile um, metatarsals there's a duck bill uh, yeah try uh, duck bill tooth little tail vertebra from something or other part of a tyrannosaur tooth how exciting um, another salamander vertebra Here's a little fat, this is a crocodile tooth, but it's still got the root on it. So when these animals are about to shed their teeth, the root is, is, is reabsorbed as it is in our, in our teeth. Um, but that one still had its root, so it came from the head of a dead crocodile. Got a few things left, but not too many actually. So we're almost done with this little experiment. Okay, I've got that. I'm not sure what that is. This probably a tail vertebra from a triceratops by the looks of it. And some fossilized wood. And I've got two, well, one film container one tiny container and a couple of other things in here and then that's it I'm done uh, 
it's got a gar tooth in it. I mean, a, uh, a ray tooth. It's not that exciting. Uh, ooh. Here's part of a crocodile jaw. And if I flip it round, you can see the tooth sockets. Where's the rest of it? Who knows? But um, that's quite a cute brachychampsa, I think, that one, because the, the tooth sockets are quite small compared to the depth of the jaw. Um, so I think that's probably a brachychampsa. That's the turtle-eating crocodile. That's the one I like. It's, uh, I don't have too much against turtles. It's just sometimes when you've collected thousands of turtles, you just want to find something else, you know. Uh, what's here now? Last film container. Uh, tail vertebra, probably a champsosaur. Another tail vertebra. Lots of champsosaur vertebrae. We don't need to look at those. Uh, here's another one of those little carnivorous, little theropod, little raptor toe bones. Um, so pretty cute, that one. Some triceratops teeth. More turtle vertebrae. The last thing I've got looks quite interesting. It's in this little pot here. So let's find the last thing. This pot says Ornithomimus core. Is it? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, yeah, so this is a foot claw. You can see it's got quite sharp, what we call a keel. It's got like a hardened edge on the top. Hard? That's a bad word to use. Um, it's quite pointed. It's quite flat on the underside. And the articular end that fits under the toes is rounded off and uh, mostly worn away. So this is the foot, foot claw from a... Uh, ornithomimid, ornithomimus uh, dinosaur, the ostrich mimicking dinosaurs. Well, the comments don't automatically scroll down. Not sure if anybody actually uh, had any real questions. Uh, do you find different similar species variation in the same strata level with different areas? We probably do. We probably do find different species in different areas. Um, as I've said before, um, Shark material seems quite rare in the areas around Jordan, but it seems more common as you move out towards the seaway, which is not too surprising, really. But um, uh, I expect we would see more differences. Uh, we don't seem to get the really huge Edmontosaurus bone beds in uh, Montana, um, but they are present, at least in South Dakota. So we do get Edmontosaurus, but it doesn't seem to die in big big herds, big groups, whatever that means. Um, so there are differences um, between these different regions, but it's not really been looked at in any um, in any major way. Um, so that's one of the things that... I mean, we have county level data on these, but I think there's more differences between the different levels in the Hell Creek because of how the environment changes through Hell Creek time. It's part of what I did for my dissertation, um, which I still have to publish those parts. Um, so I suppose um, if, unless anybody has any questions, I guess I will probably stop. I've been talking for an hour and 43 minutes and I'll probably regret doing this in the future. Um, but uh, here's a little experiment, show you a little bit of what I do day by day. I'm sure most people who saw this video are people who've actually, who actually know me and know what I do. But um, uh, this is... I didn't know what was in these containers before I opened them. There was a, there was a couple I'd opened, so I knew there was a at least things of vague interest in that um, but um, yeah uh, so thanks for tuning in um, I said that I was gonna do another live um, like a lesson thing um, on tyrannosaurs now um, Clint Boyd and his gang over at Bismarck Museum every day I think they're doing a one-hour broadcast um, if you look up the the North Dakota Heritage Center or North Dakota Geological Society and various Facebook pages, they've been doing broadcasts about an hour a day, uh, aimed at sort of families and people who are in who are in, in their houses right now, uh, self isolating. So something for kids to watch, that sort of thing. And they asked me and um, hopefully some of my crew to do um, a 
the Tyrannosaur one, because we've got some nice Tyrannosaur material here in the collections, especially stuff that we've collected quite recently. So um, that's on the 30th of March. Um, that's in a week's time we're going to do another live broadcast like this, probably for about an hour. And we're going to go through some of our nice Tyrannosaur stuff. So this was all a bit random. I appreciate it wasn't the greatest material, but there were some cool things in there. Um, I'm excited, especially that little mammal jaw. That one's, um, I, I think some people would probably like to see that. Not the greatest mammal jaw in the world, but um, they aren't that common, so they're worth having, every one of them. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in. You'll be able to watch this again if you want to, or maybe you got home and didn't realise this was happening, because I didn't realise it was happening until uh, earlier on this morning. So um, thanks for tuning in. Um, post any questions as comments, I guess. Um, and we'll do, certainly I'll be doing another live video on the 30th, and I'll probably do something again before that, um, if I think of something interesting to do. All right, well, cheers and goodbye.